Hey everybody, welcome to the portfolio judging video. And uh, I think it's only fair that if I'm going to judge your portfolios, I give you my portfolio that I would have submitted for this content for all of these contests to judge yourselves. So we're going to start here with the familiar unfamiliar submission I would have sent in. And this is my niece and my nephew. I have met my niece. This was the third time I got to see her because she lives uh, where I used to live in California. So now in Colorado, that's been a heck of a, a distance, especially during the lockdown. So I hadn't seen her since she was like a year old. Uh, and then my nephew I'd never met. So this was the first time meeting him. So that would be familiar and unfamiliar how I would have pro approached that subject. And you can see for everybody who submitted two photos in this, in, in like a pseudo collage, that's also how I would have uh, approached this exact same thing or the exact same prompt. So for those curious, um, Pentax K1 and 50 millimeter FA star 1.4, the, the newer one. This next photo for the new subject kind of bends the rules a hair. I photographed deer before, but this is a Sitka deer, which I've never photographed. But more importantly for me, I've never gotten to photograph a deer shedding its velvet. That's something I've wanted to do for a long time. And so uh, I saw this this deer was shedding its velvet when we walked past it initially. When we came back, it was really trying to get it off of its antler. And this was just, a, if, I'd, if I'd, I'd arrived a handful of seconds later, I would have missed this shot. It was right at the very beginning when we walked up to it. And I had uh, my Pentax K1, I believe. It's a K1 or K3, one of those two. And the uh, Tamron made Quantaray 70 through 300. And I just, you know, zoomed it out to around about 250 and got this photo. So... Um, yeah, it turned out well. This is a photo I will probably never be able to replicate, but at any rate. Um, for the one roll, one shot entry, this would have been mine. This was taken with a Sony A7S II and the Zeiss 55mm. May have been an A6400, I forget which for sure. Anyway, uh, as many of you know, I photograph, uh, I volunteer for a local rescue, and I photograph their dogs to help them get placed with good homes. And when I do that, I'll go and I'll 30, 45 minutes shoot, I'll photograph, I'll, I'll burn through a few hundred photos. So this is a dog that was up for rescue in the foster that, that she was with. And they were playing in the yard while I was taking photos. And I really liked the way that they interacted here. But um, hundreds of photos, definitely more than, than 36. So uh, it's, you know, take a few hundred photos. And if I can't get, if I can't get the rescue 10 or 12 decent photos, I've, I probably need to stop, right? Um, for near home, can't get much closer to home for me than Steinbeck. Uh, he's, he's, some days he is like my shadow, and some days like right now, fingers crossed, uh, he is sleeping on the couch in the other room. So at any rate, this remains, I think, the best photo I've taken of Steinbeck so far, and um, really very pleased with this shot. Uh, for those curious, Sony A7S II and Canon FDN 135F2, if not wide open, then maybe stop down very slightly. And for my black and white entry, we have a photo of this uh, old rail car at uh, the Independence State Park mine in Alaska. And I, I did not have a strong year for black and white photography in 2022. Just some years are like that. But this would have been my entry. I think it was one of my best black and white photos. And it, does, it, it, it captures tone, texture, and uh, nice depth in here. Plus, we've got the fog and the mountains. And just um, it hits a lot of the notes that I look for in a successful black and white photo. So, uh, and I this was a Pentax K1. And I'm pretty sure that this was done with the 21 millimeter FA Limited. So that would have been my portfolio entry. Time for you guys to judge away as you see fit. We're, the way I'm gonna go through your guys' portfolios is I've got the folder set up and then the, the winner and then four honorable mentions. We'll look at the honorable mentions at the la as the last, four of the last five and then the winner last. So we're just gonna go through these in kind of a random order. And uh, we'll talk about what I liked about the portfolios, what I think the real strengths are, and which of my photos, which of the photos was my personal favorite in each portfolio. So first up from Tim Peters, we've got a portfolio that has five completely different images. Each of them is a different style, right? We've got the, uh, the building face, which is like very large format inspired, a sports photo. We've got the, uh, t the view from above of the town and the sports reenact, uh, the battle reenactment, which is like a very gritty 
um, reportage style photo and then of course the photo of the SUV in front of the two older buildings of this the new subject which is the building face uh, is my favorite I think it's just a really well executed use of black and white and uh, uh, I think it does a lot to really build on a nice co compounding of shapes to create an image close second would have been the familiar unfamiliar battle scene from Stephen Boyce, we have a portfolio that shows three different types of subjects, use of black and white and color, and different approaches to different subjects. So again, what we're seeing here is different types of subjects and different approaches. So we've got a couple of really good portraits and a couple of nature scenes here that are also pretty well executed. And each of those two pairings handles their subjects differently. And then uh, a bright, colorful image that we saw for familiar, unfamiliar. In this portfolio, my favorite photo, and I think the one that is executed the, the, the best, is the one subject portrait of the, of the man from the shoulders up. Very close second would have been the portrait for black and white of the woman. From Sam West, we have another portfolio with five completely different images. Sports photo, waterfall, uh, very nice, almost color field style images we talked about. The double photo of the plane, which is an industrial style photo, and then the interior architecture. Five completely different subjects handled in five completely different ways. And uh, in all of them, some of them are, are really well executed for different reasons, as we've talked about throughout this week. Of these, my favorite photo is the new subject, which is the cyclist photo. I, I think that was just a really well executed sports shot. From Rod Stewart, we have a, a portfolio of five pinhole images and an interesting approach to using a pinhole camera in different ways. We've got a couple of nature photos, a couple of portraits, which are not easy to get with pinhole cameras, and then a, uh, an architectural photo. Really strong unifying uh, image aesthetic throughout this is the use of very stark contrast, dark darks, white whites, and uh, use of a few different angles. We've got a couple of photos that are looking down, a couple that are looking up, and then one that's level. So all of these show different approaches to handling their subjects in different ways, and, uh, and, and all of them had different, different reasons for why they were successful. For me, the, the best photo in this is the near home photo, which we talked about as potentially being a double exposure of the image of the person on the couch. From Richard, Richard Mangle, we have uh, another portfolio of five fairly different subjects, right? And this is one thing that I saw through almost uniformly throughout your, your portfolios this year, by the way, is that a lot of you submitted portfolios with a great range and diversity of subjects or a range of different ways of handling subjects. Those aren't easy things to do. There are lots of photographers out there who are like, here's a thing I do and I do it well and every photo looks the same and I think you can probably think of a handful of those out there. That's it's, it's very hard to master a type of photography, but it's also very hard to be well above average at multiple different types of photography. So kudos to everyone who submitted photos in multiple different genres. So, but anyway, going back to Richard's portfolio, we have a really wonderful black and white image of some reeds in a pond, a photo of, I'm assuming his cat, a portrait photo there. Uh, this really bright exploration of colors in the photo of the tree, and then a couple of photos from, uh, from a forest here that uh, are sort of like scene and environment photos. Of these, I, I think the color use in the tree photo is really stunning and a great example of, of how color and texture can work together, as we talked about. But the best photo for me is definitely the photo of the reeds in the black and white photo for all of the reasons we talked about in that video. It's uh, just an, an exceptionally interesting and well done execution of that subject. From Richard Mander, again, we have completely different subjects, different execution styles, and some really, uh, really visually interesting work here. All of them have different color palettes. They have different angles with them. They treat the subjects in different manners. And uh, they show that there's that, that what's going on with, with Richard here is that he's got a different eye for different subjects. And how am I, how am I gonna photograph this different subject, right? How can I treat it in a fair and and pleasing manner. For me, 
while I think that the photo of the pig is definitely the most moving image, uh, my favorite is the one roll, one subject photo of the still life of the lights on a mantle. I'm assuming that's, that's what it looks like anyway. I, I think that really evokes a nice mood and is a very, very pleasing image to look at. From Lucas Zachnowicz. Trying, I'm trying to get better with, with the hard names. I, I am I'm making an effort. Uh, anyway, we have a portfolio of, again, five completely different subjects. We've got a cat, some sort of um, OSHA violating monstrosity, a couple of sheep, and then uh, the, the double cityscape and the boat. And we see some shared angles in, in three of the images, which are the boat, the cityscapes, and then the, uh, the, the caterpillar loader there. We can see that the, uh, the viewpoint is off to the left and in one of the cityscapes is off to the right, but you know, an angle in, inherent in the image. And then in the two animal shots, they're like sort of straight on without that disappearing vanishing point. Really interesting to look at the portfolio and, and see that, that some of the subjects get a get the, the angle treatment and some get it get the, the straight on treatment and I think that the use of those different approaches complements each of the subjects in different ways uh, for me I think my favorite photo in this is the familiar unfamiliar which is the two juxtaposed different uh, city streets that are that are in that photograph from Garrett Dennington we have a photo which is five, a portfolio of five photos of the Kaufman Arts Center. So this is a portfolio that's really pretty hard to pick a favorite because all it's all of the same subject. It's completely different approaches to the same subject and all of the photos are successful in many different ways for many different reasons. Um, and as I said, I think multiple times throughout this week, if I had paid for this photo shoot, I'd be very happy with the results. I think all of these are very high quality images. If I had to pick one that I liked the most, it would be the new subject photo, which is taken straight on with all the horizontal lines and the grass in the bottom. Uh, I think that from a, from a visual perspective, it's, while it's not the most visually interesting, it's the one that catches my eye because it's so much different than the rest of them. And uh, I think it's a really interesting way to approach this subject, which is to say, this is a building that has a lot of depth and shape. Let's get let's completely get rid of that. And so it stands out from the other images in this portfolio for that reason. From Gabriel Silva's, we have a portfolio of five subjects here. And again, all of them treated in fairly different ways. We do have, with the exception of the car photo, a lot of central framing here. And, um, yeah, but also different techniques in it. each image. We have a long exposure, a close-up photo, a couple of close-up photos, uh, partial subject inclusion in the car. So um, really interesting variety of uses of colors and subjects and subject types and locations and things like that. So not only a different approach to each subject, but different subjects in each image. Of these, my favorite is the black and white photo of the, um, of the headstone. I think that's just a really stark image, and I think it, the, the image execution really complements the subject quite nicely. Um, it just worked very well. From Frank Wooters, we have five, we, we can call this five completely different images, right? I think that's fair to say. Uh, two portraits, but completely different types of portraits. But one of the consistent things throughout Frank's portfolio this year, and if I recall correctly from the previous years as well, is a really exceptional use for, of light and a really good eye for how light can complement subjects in a frame. So if we look at the, the bread on the board, really even lighting, but not so much so that it shows any detail in the background. And then we've got the portraits. Again, really good use of lighting in the way that light can complement your subject in those. The guitar, really great use of top-down spotlighting just to highlight that one thing and make the background completely disappear. And then using scene lighting in a way in the um, action shot here to allow a long enough exposure to get motion blur. So five really good uses of lighting in this. My favorite photo is, of course, the black and white portrait. I think it's exceedingly well executed 
and a really good way of looking at available lighting and figuring out how to make that available lighting work uh, best to complement the subject. Very close second would have been the guitar photo. From Elias Morgenstern, we have, again, five very different photos, right? And um, we talked about all of these at length in the um, during the week, but but the uh, the photos all have different approaches to their subject. We've got looking up at the building. We've got looking relatively straight on at the person walking uh, through that covered stairwell. We've got a, a level landscape photo of, the, of whichever city that is. We've got a cropped action shot, which really is a, a really good crop of that action shot because it, it puts you right there in the scene as the photographer. And we've got a really nice mood portrait uh, at sunset, which is, of course, uh, I think not going to shock anyone to hear that that is my favorite photo of this portfolio. Um, really good approach to, to taking on different subjects and different types of photos in different ways. From Eduardo Montero, we have five photos here that three of which are portraits, then the close-up of the flower, and then the building detail. And we talked about the different strengths and, and everything in these different photos throughout. There, I think that for me, the handling of the portrait photos is the best. And I think that they're the most successful images. And some people as, as photographers were all drawn to different subjects. I shouldn't say some, all photographers are drawn to different subjects in different ways. Some of it works really well. And in this case, I think the, por the portrait fo photos all worked very, very well. And one of the things that really draws me to Eduardo's portraits is how all three of them are different. We've got the close-up photo of the, the dude with the blue light right there, neck up. That's a very tightly cropped photo. And then scroll back a little bit, and we've got the photo of the girl looking off to the side of the frame. And, and, and so the, the, dude, the photo of the dude is like a portrait of him, and you get a hint of his environment. With the girl, it's a portrait in her environment, and you get just enough of the environment to start to get a story. And then we back out really far, and we've got the person walking down the walkway, and it mostly is an environmental portrait. So um, as, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, some people are really, really good at doing a single thing. But here we have three completely different examples of different approaches to photographing people, all of which are successful in their own right and for their own reasons. Oh, of those, my favorite photo, by the way, it is the um, blue photo, the photo of the person with, with the blue light on them. From David Cockerell, we have a, um, a portfolio of five, mostly five different subjects. We have a couple of animal photos. We have a couple of architectural photos, the bridge and the building. And we could, we could classify the, um, the keypad as halfway between architecture and industrial, right? And a mix of color and black and white. And what looks like it's probably all film. Um, yeah, those are probably all film shots. So we, t we talked about, I think, most of these at, at length pretty well over the course of the week. My favorite shot here is it's actually really close between the bridge and the, uh, the keypad. And for completely different reasons, I think the bridge shot is a good classic architectural bridge photo. It, it hits the right notes. The um, keypad photo, I think, is a really interesting detail shot. Like, who's, who's going to walk up to a keypad and be like, oh, look, I can take a photo of that. I mean, that's not a subject that, that people are going to be instantly drawn to bridges are. So I think that if I if I had to pick one, it would be the keypad because I think from a the the way that it works with all of the different things that go into a good black and white photo and the eye to look at that and say, here's this completely pedestrian thing that could be a good subject, I think that's really nice and it's a well executed photo. From Carlos Diaz, we have a, uh, a another fairly mixed portfolio. We have a couple of black and white photos, and then we have the three color photos, which uh, I guess two of them could be like urban decay architectural photos. Could maybe theoretically expand that to the boat photo as well. Um, but different, but different styles and different approaches to handling the subjects, right? Different angles. One looking up, a few of them looking straight on, one of them looking at an angle so that the boat is sort of uh, going to a vanishing point. And then 
uh, all of them outdoors except for the familiar unfamiliar pairing, which is an, uh, a pairing of indoor photos. So it, one of the things that all of these uh, photos exhibit is a good eye for handling the subject in a different way. I think we talked about well enough the strengths and weaknesses of each of them throughout the week, the week but they all show a, a different approach to to treating a subject so that that subject has the ability to stand on its own within the image. For me, the best photo is the black and white entry, which is the one that's taken under the bridge because it's a really interesting setting, really well technically executed. And uh, I think that also those two pigeons in there do kind of make the photo in a lot of ways because they, they give some life and action to the image. Next up, our first honorable mention is going to be coming in from Ali Tarlani. And Ali submitted a really nice uh, portfolio with, uh, a few diff- with a few different approaches to a few different subjects. So we've got three photos that are of a single subject. And one of the interesting things I thought about, I, I looked at with those, with the leaf, the rose, and the necklace, is that they're, they're still life photos of a single object, and they are all lit differently. So one of the things that really drew me to this is that with those three photos, it's playing around with how a single subject can interact with lighting to show different elements about that subject. And then we have a really nice uh, outdoor shot of the um, the mountains at, at the sea in the fog. And then, of course, the pairing of the two portraits. So uh, from a technical perspective, I think my favorite shot in here is the one of the necklace because it's a very well, very well executed from a technical perspective. Uh, my personal favorite shot is actually the the sea and fog and mountains because I think it's a really captivating image to look at with the way that all of the different uh, elements of the black and white photo interact together to create a really neat scene. Our next runner up is from and- Andre Jelakovic and Andre's portfolio was really solid. Uh, I think four of these photos are 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 amazing, right? The honestly, the the near home, the pigeon photo is the was the only really weak photo. It, it not even really weak was the, was the weakest of these five photos. Okay, all the rest of these are really incredible portrait photos. And uh, all of them stand up really well and, and hold their own and, and show an interesting aw- approach to how Andre has photographed people in four different ways. Up close, far away, single person in the frame, multiple people in the frame interacting with each other. And um, just re- a really good eye, I think, here for how portraits can say different things about subjects and how different and how subjects can be captured in different ways to create different moods within a portrait. Great use of lighting throughout the throughout all of them. Just a really good eye for capturing people. So um, realistically, the the photo that kept this from being the winning uh, portfolio is is the pigeon photo. Uh, the other four, I think, are as good as like right there with the winning portfolios photos. Uh, really phenomenal portfolio. It's a, it was very hard for me to pick a favorite, um, but the photo of the guitarist and the photo of the two kids up against the wall, uh, right? Th- those two are my two favorites. I, I couldn't pick a favorite between the two of them. They're both amazing. Uh, Antonio King submitted this uh, portfolio of five black and white images, and we've talked about these ones at length throughout. They were all really good, really competent photos. Um, the the best of my my favorite I shouldn't say the best my favorite of these is the new subject photo which is the white tub and the black fl- floor with the two sandals at the top of the image I think that's just a super creative way of a, of looking at a subject like it's we we can assume it's a tub let let let's do that for the sake of this argument it's a tub like most everyone has one that's kind of a boring subject. But the way that this photo is executed, it's just a, an interplay of co- of tones and shapes. It's just, and like I said in the video that we talked about it, the two sandals really make the image. Uh, it's just a great, great way of, of having a photographic eye for a, a pretty pe- pedestrian setting, right? 
The only photo in this portfolio that I would call out to say, saying it's not on par with the other four is the one of the screen and the tree, which is in and of itself an interesting photo, but f looking at the other four, it, uh, it is not, it's not as strong as those four, which are all just phenomenally exceptional photos. I'm probably going to print these out and tell my friends I took them. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding about that, but they are really good photos. Uh, the second runner-up. Now, there are, there are two of you right now who have, I know have your fingers crossed, really excited about finding out whether or not you've won the portfolio contest. I'm, I'm hoping you're excited anyway. Um, the second runner-up comes to us all the way from Ukraine with Dmitry Ochaika, and he submitted a portfolio uh, with four of the five shots being showing life in Ukraine after the invasion began. Uh, actually, we could probably say all five, right? And one of the things that really stood out for me with this portfolio is the way that we, we could, writ large, we could say that all of these photos have the same subject, which is the way that the life of the Ukrainian people has changed since uh, the Russian invasion. And they all handle those things in slightly different ways, but with different camera use and positioning and subjects. And so it's a really interesting approach to taking a single concept. Here is how life has changed, and here are different ways to show it so that it resonates differently. It, it, each image, each of those four images especially, uh, that show different elements of the life of the, of the people in Ukraine, do so in a way that puts the viewer in the scene in a different manner. So um, yeah, it's really well executed in that regard. And I do also think, by the way, the, the one roll, one subject photo of the tree with the snow on it is also very well executed and a stunningly attractive photo. Uh, if I were to pick a favorite of these, I don't think this will shock anyone because it won its category. It's the familiar, unfamiliar photo. I think that's the, the, the best in this one. This, a very, very close second is the near home photo, which is the one color photo in this portfolio. And the last, and of course, Stephen Boski now knows he is the winner, comes from Stephen Boski. It would be, um, it, this is a consistent portfolio across the board. I think that um, it would be hard for me to not say that this was also the best portfolio since Stephen won two of the categories and got honorable mentions and two others, I think. Um, so a really solid portfolio across the board. The three, the three portrait photos were really uh, class leading in this contest, especially the one for black and white, as we talked about in that video yesterday. Just a, amazing execution. And of course, the one role, one subject, which also won the category. So Stephen won two, took first place in two categories. Uh, and by the way, that when I do these videos, by the way, I usually record them over the span of a few days. I never remember from one day to the next who won a previous category. And so I go in kind of you know, blank for each one. Um, and I didn't realize until before I made this video, I was, uh, I recorded this voiceover. I was putting everyone's prizes together. I'm like, Steven's getting a big box here. What the heck? Um, anyway, but well-deserved because these photos are all really, really solid. So, um, you know, people are hard to photograph. Architecture is hard to photograph. Cars, hard to photograph. And in many different ways, every one of these photos tackles the subject in it in an exemplary manner. So if I had to pick one of these as the best, obviously it's going to be the one from yesterday, the black and white photo. Uh, it is, if not, that is very possibly the best photo of the competition. Uh, one of the two. That and then the, the second place from yesterday, the, the landscape from Sunny Zhao of the the, the villa with the mountains in the background, Th those were like so close neck and neck as to which one I think was, was um, the best photo of the competition. Anyway, for this whole year, guys, everyone, you submitted amazing work. And looking back at the way that some of the photos from the previous years and the people who have submitted over multiple years have improved, there's been incredible improvement across the board from everybody who submitted over and over again. And it... Um, it says a lot about everyone who submitted here that there were so, so many strong images. And I didn't, I didn't call these out specifically, but there were so many photos throughout this contest that I looked at and just went, dang it, I really wish I had taken that shot because that's a good one. And uh, I, I don't know of any higher praise that a photographer can give another photographer than to say, 
I really like that shot and I, I wish I had taken it. Thank you everyone for participating and look in your email boxes for something from me uh, or those of you who've already received something from me uh, asking for your address so I can send you some loot. Take care and I'll see you in whatever videos come next.